Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of the Day. It is Friday, March the 6th, and we get to pick up here in Psalm chapter 6 once again. And uh, boy, this psalm is, is just jam-packed of, of great wisdom and instruction for us. Uh, and you say, why do I need instruction? Why do I need uh, wisdom? Why do I need this understanding from, from what you say is the Bible? Well, he's going to express this here in the verses we pick up with this morning in verses 20 um, through 23. And so I pray that we take these verses and really um, uh, meditate on them and allow them to do exactly what the Word of God says it can do. And so notice what he says here in verse 20. He says, My son, keep thy father's commandments and forsake not the law of thy mother. And so this commandments and law issue is a big deal um, as um, they work side by side. They, they coexist in perfect harmony as the law of God and the commandments of God. And these are two, um, two of the same, but they're, they're different as well. So you have the law of God, which tells us what we can and cannot do. And then it's the commandments of the things that we have to do. And so, um, so you have the warning, uh, don't do this because it's bad. Do this because it's good. There's the law. And then there's the commandments. These things you must do or you must, you need to do, because if you don't do them, it's not going to end well with you. And so therefore you have the law and the commandments. So forsake not the commandments of your father and not the law of your mother. They help you to guide you and to lead you. And then here is where the key comes in. And we talked a lot about this uh, in our Bible study last night. It says, bind them continually upon thine heart. Bind them continually upon thine heart. And so one of the reasons why the Christian faith, uh, the Christian church is falling apart so terribly bad is because it does not take these words to heart. It doesn't write God's word upon its heart. And so the Bible says, I have hidden thy word upon my heart that I might not sin against God. To bind them means to strap them to, out of, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And everywhere you see, God always says, write these commandments on the tables of your heart. And this is called scripture memorization. And uh, we know our little pet peeve verses that we love. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Our pet peeves, uh, for we know that God can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can think or ask. Our pet peeves, for we know that all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. With Our pet peeves, Psalm 23, uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And so these are pet peeves scriptures, and these are good scriptures because they, uh, they do help us to understand troubles and trials and difficulties and things like that. But what about sin? What about the law and the commandments? What about putting those things on your heart so that the Bible would come along and say these words? There is no temptation which is overtaking you except that which is common to man. All, all this uh, that he has been describing in Proverbs 6 are temptations that the devil tries to use to distract us and to destroy us, to pull us away and bring us down into the pit. That's what his goal is. And so he says there's no, no temptation except that which is common to man. Everybody faces the same temptations. But the word says... But with the temptation, I will make a way of escape. And so God says there is a way to escape the temptations. There's a way to escape the wrong type of thinking. There's a, there's a way to escape the wrong type of actions in your life. And it is by doing this one thing here where he says, bind them continually upon thine heart. And so when we're in the Bible and we're, when we're in study of God's word, we don't have the problem of keeping our heart and mind focused on the Lord. And so while we're doing our Bible study, guess what? For a few moments, we're not sinning. Why? Because we are focused in on the word of God. But when we walk away from this word is where we get tempted and, and, um, and pulled at to, to go to the left or go to the right, get to get off the straight and narrow path. But the devil, as it says, the, uh, Come of not but to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his M.O. That's what he wants to do. We're walking down the path. Uh, uh, be careful, your adversary, the devil, walketh around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So as we're walking down the straight and narrow path, God says, keep your eyes focused on me. Put my word upon your heart and let it be continually there all the day long. And you will walk a, a better path of the straight line that you're supposed to walk. But when you begin to look to the right, 
and you begin to look to the left, well, you lose your footing, number one, because you're not watching where you're going, and you stumble. And when you stumble, the devil's there to pounce on you and take you down. That's his goal. He wants to take us down. And certainly, if we start taking that exit to the right or start taking that exit to the left, we know the path leads to the city of destruction. And that is where he comes in and says, do not forsake the commandments of your father, nor uh, the, forsake the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart. You need to do the work to put God's word on your heart. If you're going to walk uh, rightly before God, if you're going to be pleasing unto your Lord and Savior, if you're not going to be tricked by the things that the devil uses in this world to pull you away, then you've got to bind God's word upon your heart. And then he says, and tie them about thy neck. So not only put them on the inside, but, but adorn your life with them as well. Uh, put them anywhere and everywhere you can. Put scripture up. It will keep you walking the straight and narrow. But not only will it keep you walking the straight and narrow, but it will bring great peace to your heart. And so notice what he says here in verse 22. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. Don't we want God to lead us? When thou goest, not when thou sit and meditates and studies the word. He says, when thou goest, everywhere you go, when you put it on the tables of your heart, then I'm going to lead you through this valley of the shadow of death. I'm going to lead you through all these trials and tribulations. In this world, you shall have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. He can take you through this world over and beyond the trials and the tribulations and lead you. But now look at what he says. I love this. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. And when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. Man, to keep thee means to secure thee. So when I, when I go out, he leads me in the way so that when I lay my head down at night, hmm, I have peace. And I know that if my Lord cometh, that I'm okay, that I'm clean and I'm right and I'm ready to go into the glories of heaven. This is the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ and binding his word upon our hearts and around our necks. But then notice he says, lastly, <coughs> excuse me, he says, and when thou awakest. So he's there when we, when we walk in the world, he's there when we lay down, and he's there when we get up. Why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And then when the moment your eyelids begin to open up, God, God's spirit that lives in our hearts takes his word and throws it right into our mind. Oh, man, blessed is he whose mind is kept in the things of God. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Thy, light, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, every morning new mercies I see. Oh, man, thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Thou preparest a table for me before me in the presence of mine enemies. <laughs> Imagine if God could speak to you that way every morning we wake up. Well, that's what he says. He says, when thou, when thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. Everybody always wants to say, I, uh, I want God to talk with me. I just wish God would speak to me. And God says, I would speak to you if you would do what I've asked you to do. And that is to put my word upon your heart. My word upon your heart, bind it upon your neck, put it everywhere and anywhere you can, but mostly in your heart. And then he says, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light and reproofs of instructions are the way of life, are the way of life. And so he says, these things will help you to walk that path that you desire to walk, but you're going to have to put in the work to keep them and bind them continually upon your heart. This is why the church is so weak, and it's why when someone comes along that they don't really know what to say, because they don't know God's word unless it's in their hand. You don't need God's word in your hand as much as you need God's word in your heart. And so I pray today that you go forth mightily in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I pray that you begin to bind these commandments and these laws upon your heart and put them around your neck and walk Walk gracefully and humbly, but also confidently and proudly in the word of God. And I pray you go forth, and I pray that you are encouraged.